I've been stuck on this porta potty long before anyone comes back to replace the toilet paper. I didn't do it to be different. I didn't have a choice. I mean, I could just use my underwear as emergency TP and run commando back to my Lincoln. But these are my favorite undies. They're serene. The thread count is so high it'll make you question your place on this earth. I could just walk out of here without wiping. But then everyone's gonna be like, hey look, it's Matthew McConaughey and he's got a big old poopy butt. That would be no bueno un problema. Ladies and gentlemen, the short news with your host, Alex Mador. Hello, hello, hi there, and welcome to the short news podcast. Let me just fix my microphone here. I just set all this up. I've been slacking. Um, how's this angle here? Um, all right. <clears throat> Welcome to the Short News Podcast, the show that's hated by Republicans everywhere. And that's okay, because they send me emails to let me know how much they hate me. That's how I know. So, that's what's going on. Thank you for coming. Um. And see, I just wanted to use that so badly. It it just I I got this um this soundbite I don't know like a couple weeks ago, and I haven't really put it to good use. So now we are, and like a lot of us are really smart. I'm really smart. Yeah. Okay. Um. Nothing is impossible. So, dude, this has been an interesting weekend. I got drunk, put hats on my cat, and started a huge beef with James Charles fans. <laughs> A.K.A. the sisters. Dude, you don't want the sisters to come after you. They're rav- rabid, just like the K-pop stands. Except, K-pop stands don't defend predators as far as I know, so they're automatically better. If you don't keep up with or care about YouTube and the people on there, then this probably won't be interesting to you unless you passionately hate predators like me. So, James Charles is a YouTube makeup artist with millions of followers. He's an adult who should be able to make responsible decisions about his interactions with fans, but he's been caught sending inappropriate messages to minors maybe like five times and has even admitted to doing so but claims that he didn't know they were underage, blames the victim, says he they, they tricked him. Okay, dude, that, do, that, that doesn't matter. As a celebrity, you should be responsible enough to check for proof that the fan you're talking to is a consenting adult before you start sending nude photos to them and asking to, like, do sexual things with them. And it's not like these are allegations. He's admitted to it. And he's getting in trouble for it in some ways. I'm not the only one speaking out here. He's been removed from hosting his show on YouTube Premium. They replaced him with someone else who isn't a predator, preying on underage fans. It's not fucking hard to check ID before you start sending nudes to a kid. Why would you even take that risk? That's what makes it sketchy. He and so many other people know better than to be ignorant to a person's age when you're looking to hook up. I don't know why he isn't being investigated right now. Something really needs to be done before he fucking does it again. And, you know, I have. This little clip right here from TikTok that this dude posted. 
about it. Let's see if this gives us any um, any insight. Okay, so trigger warning. I will be talking about grooming go. and James Charles. So if you get triggered by any of those, keep scrolling. But if not, watch this video, please. So last Wednesday on the 17th, uh, James Charles snapped me on Snapchat. He added me back because I had snapped him a while ago, just like a fan to influence your conversation. I was excited because he's my biggest influence, influencer-wise, and he I've always looked up to him. So I was excited to get his message back. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to post proof of it right now. This is the notification that I got when he snapchatted me first. Right. And just for further proof, he deleted the chat. I don't know what he deleted, but that's me opening his snapchat. I went into the bathroom, and I guess he saw the bathroom light, so he started making the conversation very sexual, and it made me really uncomfortable. And I'll post some of the stuff that he sent me now. You can't see it because it's blurry, because I took it on my iPad, because I don't want him to see that I screenshotted it, but I'll post it right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Those are... Yeah, wait, 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 wait. What do those say? Um... I bet you can make me finish by just flexing and showing off your body hair. Haha, ha, without even taking your dick out. Um. Jeez, sisters. Jesus, sister. Why are you doing that, James? Why are you not checking to make sure the person you're talking to is, is, is of, of age, dude? What the fuck? Like, yeah, it's careless, but it's also, like, pedophilia? Or he, what, what is the proper, what is the politically correct term? I'm just going to go with predatory behavior. How about that? Is that good enough? I think so. <clears throat> he proceeded to send me explicit pictures of his body. Oh, <laughs> wow, okay. He's sending pictures of his ass to a kid. His naked ass to a kid. It's a good look. That's a good look, sisters. One part two. <laughs> Is there more? No, there's not more. Damn. Um. Okay, we'll go back to this browser in a sec. But after seeing that picture... No! No, God, please, no, 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 no. So this is where I come in. So he tweeted that he was bummed that he didn't win sexiest bald man uh, because he wore a bald cap one time and Prince William won sexiest bald man instead. And I replied to his tweet saying, it's okay, you still have a chance to win most trending groomer and that shit has like 200 something likes right now and it's only going up I, I didn't think anyone would see it to be honest i and i've kind of been kind of trolling james for a couple of days when he tweets because i don't want him to be able to avoid these ter these terrible predatory things that he's done and someone replied to me saying you need to get a new hobby and some people came up to bat for me in the replies defending me. But there were also people shitting on me for calling him a groomer. T calling me a clown because I was going after a predator. So there was this whole argument. And the whole time what these James fans, these sisters, are essentially saying is, yeah, he messaged those underage people and sent them nudes and said he wanted to fuck them. But leave him alone. It's not your business. How the fuck is that an argument? If someone committed a crime, especially a predatory crime, it's everyone on the internet's business to hold that garbage human being accountable for said crimes. I understand that you feel like you have a personal connection to this person, but when they've even admitted to doing something horrible, why are you still rabidly defending them? It makes you look horrible. And people will look back at this and be like, hey, remember when you defended that pedophile and told that weird Asian kid online to leave him alone? That's fucking embarrassing. As more information comes out, you're probably going to want to rethink your blind support of this dude. So yeah, I got lit up online by these James stands while I was pissed drunk, and they tried to claim that I'm trying to be relevant by tweeting in his replies. 
no, dude, I had no idea that it would get that many likes and end up at the top of his replies. Fifter. I was expecting no one to see it. But James, like, but James in his notifications, hopefully. <clears throat> and I wanted him to think about what he did for even a second. I'm not trying to be relevant by speaking out against a predator. I try to be relevant when there's trending keywords on Twitter or when 90 Day Fiance is on. Yes, definitely. I'm super guilty of doing that to try to hitch a ride on the algorithm, but replies don't get you trending. They do nothing. I gained one follower during that whole feud, and then I lost three followers during it, so I got nothing out of this. I'm legitimately mad that he's pretty much getting away with this other than losing his show. And H3, H3 coming after him relentlessly. Those are like the only two repercussions that he's facing. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't get drunk and use Twitter. Maybe that's a dangerous way to start feuds with an entire fan community. Once I tried to like intentionally start a feud with K-pop stands because I was bored and lonely, but they ratioed my feed with fan cams. But it's so funny how people will reply to your tweet with some aggressive shit arguing against what you're saying and then making personal attacks and then immediately block you so you can't respond. Like, dude, you're such a fucking pussy if you do that. And I don't use that word often, but that's the most cowardly thing you can do. You blocked me because you know you're wrong and you don't want to get dunked on by a smarter person with more morals than you? Fuck James Charles and fuck his stupid fans if they still support that predator. So that's been the highlight of my weekend, other than that I spent hours on Twitch watching Hassan Piker live stream, and damn, I am super impressed with that guy. He's, he's really smart. And if you listen to um, this show, this show that you're listening to now, then you'll definitely enjoy him, because his takes are much better thought out than mine, and his streams go on for like eight hours, maybe more. He's super committed to this shit. And he's on our side, very much so. And isn't afraid to say what's on his mind and call people fucking idiots when they're being idiots. And I hope to one day be able to meet him. That's who I want to model my arguments after. He really makes sense. And is the only internet personality I watch that Ashley, like, really enjoys. She's been... She's been shitting on the tiny meat gang quite a bit lately, which triggers me. I put them on every Thursday and Friday night when they release a new podcast episode and she goes, ugh, and starts going on about how they aren't funny and aren't relatable anymore. And meanwhile, I'm sitting there just trying to laugh and enjoy their goofy jokes, but the whole time she's just shitting on it. So if the tiny meat gang ever hears this, Cody and Noel. You have my permission to call Ashley out for saying you guys aren't funny. Because I think you're funny. And she's completely wrong. Sure, there were a couple episodes last year that were subpar, but I, I chalk that up to the pandemic and transitioning to the remote podcasting setup. The vibes are different automatically because they aren't together physically. So there's a barrier there. But they got really good at it, in my opinion. They've been super funny lately. So if you haven't already, check out the Tiny Meat Gang podcast. Give them a positive review if you like it. Because they're one of the reasons I got into this whole thing. <clears throat> Anyways, there's some news to talk about today. This isn't really political, but it's definitely something to talk about. There's a giant ass ship wedged between the Suez Canal. If you haven't seen those pictures, I... Highly suggest looking them up. But how can you not see those if you're on the internet? There's memes all over. Like me versus my COVID depression and things like that. It's pretty funny. But this actually affects like 10% of trade. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, they got it out. They got it out. They got it out, guys, after like six days or something. They finally got it unstuck. Your toilet paper's coming in. I don't have to talk about how Brazil uses the canal to transport the wood pulp that they produce, which is a necessary component of toilet paper. 
But I just did. We're good. We're gonna get our toilet paper, your Charmin Ultra, whatever it is. Did you see the toilet paper that they have now? I don't know now, but I don't know how long they've had this. But I saw a commercial for it last night. It's just, so it's toilet paper, like regular old toilet paper, probably pretty soft. But on the inside, on the, 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 the cardboard roll, is scented. Like lavender scented. So while you're taking a poop, it's a mix of poop and lavender coming from the toilet paper roll. Um, so I was like, wow, they're really getting innovative with toilet paper. They've had a lot of time during this pandemic to innovate toilet paper, to rethink, reinvent toilet paper. <laughs> As an air freshener that also wipes your ass. That's cool. But it was like same time last year we were going to go into a toilet paper shortage. So I, I wish I had a bidet sponsorship that I could offer you guys as a solution. But I don't, so I'm sorry. Last year I clogged the toilet with baby wipes and Ashley was like, what the fuck? You know, you, ca you, you, you know those can't be flushed. And I was like, no, I had no idea. I've been flushing baby wipes since I was a baby. They're the best. Those wipes are so fucking comfy on your tush. There are men's baby wipes that are advertised on other podcasts. And I want to know how I get in on that. I want a men's baby wipes sponsorship. I feel like a lot of people listen to this show while they're on the toilet. Because they don't want anyone to know that they're listening to it. <laughs> Which I understand. This show is embarrassing. I say fucked up shit all the time. But so does, like, every other podcast. So as funny as this whole thing is, the Suez Canal, it affects us a lot more than you think. Like, there's so many ships that have to pass through that canal. It's com It was completely blocked up. Nothing was going through there for six days, and they didn't know how to move it. They literally, like, they had no idea. <laughs> but I've got a solution for next time. So what we do... We hook up some fighter jets, like 20 fighter jets to the ship. They all take off at full speed. They pull that shit out of its stuck spot. That's enough force. Pull it all the way to where it needs to go. That makes up for six days of delays right there. With the super fighter jet, 20 fighter jets pulling it. You got, you got to do it. That's some military spending that I could get behind. All right, we got other news. Um, weed is set to be legalized in maybe over a year here in New York. They've finally come to an agreement. That's really exciting and would be even more exciting if I was uh, planning on staying in New York. But hey, that's it's going to be cool for people to be able to get baked and not have to worry about the cops. Weed is going to become a normal thing here that people can just do when they feel like. I think that's a huge step for our society. We can stop incriminating innocent people who just want to have a simple way to feel calmer. It's not dangerous. And I'm glad someone in the government recognizes that. So when I come back to New York, hopefully it will be legal by then because I, I don't think I'm leaving permanently. I'm just going away for a little bit. Um, and you can just, like, hopefully you can just get it delivered to your home. Like it's anything else, we'll see what happens there. I'm I'm sure I'll give updates as they come along. So as you know, we like to take some time on this show um, to check in with our favorite Texas senator and see what he has to say on issues in our society. I'm speaking, of course, about Ted Cruz. So we're going to go to the most recent TV or radio appearance that he's ripped from cable and posted onto his own YouTube channel so people can get their Ted Cruz dose. All Ted, all the time. It's what the people want. So let's do it. <clears throat> you know, I think my friend who, you know, passed away a couple months ago uh, would be really proud of... um where this show has 
on in terms of roasting politicians. And I that, that's part of why I do the Ted Cruz roast in honor of him. Because I feel like he would really, really have enjoyed this a lot. And I wish I would have done it sooner. Not to get all emotional for a second. But I had to. Because you know what? Yeah. Good friend of the show. He, he will be missed. Anyways. Let's get into roasting this man. This Ted Cruz motherfucker. I don't even know who that is. No, I'm kidding. I know who that is. Unfortunately. Okay. Um. And first this morning, the heartbreaking reality of President Biden's border crisis exposed. This weekend, 19 GOP senators traveled to the Rio Grande Valley to witness the impact of the administration's okay. immigration okay. policies firsthand. We sent a photographer along to document it, we but he was there and he was told you're not coming. When the senators tried to take cell phone pictures and videos, they too were hassled. Texas Senator Ted Cruz recorded a confrontation he had with a Biden handler sent by DHS. What? Is Ted Cruz a Karen now? Is Ted Cruz a Karen? <laughs> oh my God. He's just like, I'm recording you. I'm recording you. You can't do this. It's against my rights. He's one of those now. Let's see it. Chess, to stop them. You will not believe this. We are showing it to you right here for the first time. Watch. Please give dignity to the people. Please give dignity to the people. So you worked for the commissioner, your senior advisor. You were hired two weeks ago, and you're instructed to ask us to not have any pictures taken here. Please respect the people. Because the, the political rules. leadership at DHS does not want the American people to know it. Please don't treat the people. You're right, and this is a dangerous place. Please don't treat the and people And your like policies this. That's all are... I am. Wait, 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 why, why were the Trump camps not dangerous? But these are, because they're made by Democrats. Like, I feel, like, if this were, if, if this were under the Trump administration, which was doing just this, except worse, um, then Ted would be, like, They'd be like, no, they can't record in there. That's not okay. Like, if it was a Democrat going to record in the Trump camps. So that's bullshit. I'm not defending the fact that we have all these kids in custody. I don't think that's great. I think Biden addressed it a few days ago or, like, last week uh, when he had his press conference. I don't think it was a perfect response, but I think we are in the process of making sure those kids get out of uh, custody of the American government safely. Um, again, I'm not saying this is right. None of this is right. Uh, so, so I'm not like completely against Ted on this. Like you go, when you go to this, these places, it really probably breaks your heart, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican. And um, I don't know why they're not allowed to record. I don't. Um, probably so it can't be used for political political reasons or whatever. But let's see where this goes. I'm recording you. I'm recording you. I, this is my right to record you. Unfortunately, are trying to hide them. I understand That's you were instructed. When 18 I senators ask you came to down here, respect the people, give them dignity I respect, and respect them, and I want to fix this situation. We all want and to fix this. The administration this, you're working for is anymore. responsible for these conditions. Senator Ted Cruz led the delegation. He joins me right now. He sits on the oh, Senate yeah? Judiciary and the Foreign Relations Committees. And Senator, good morning to you. Thank you for all of your work this weekend. What can you tell us? Well, Maria, good morning. It's good to be with you. We spent a day and a half down at the border, and I'll tell you, it, it is bad. I've been to the border many, many times. Uh, it is the worst that I've ever seen it. Uh, it, it is a full-blown crisis. Last month, the month of February, we had over 100,000 illegal aliens crossing over, roughly 30... Oh, why you got to call them aliens, buddy? Why you got to call them illegal aliens? I thought I thought we've already all accepted the fact that that's like not an okay thing. I said that maybe like two years ago, 
and a bunch of people got mad at me. They're like, no, it's undocumented, undocumented migrant. And I, and from then on, I've used that term out of respect because like, when you think about it, why would, why would any human being want to be called an alien? You're not an alien. You're a fucking human. You're, you're a human trying to get a better, a better card, a better hand played in life or whatever, a better opportunity than where you were at the time. A lot of people that come over, and I've said this many times, that come over to America are escaping some sort of danger, trying to get to safety, get some stability. I don't like the idea that we're locking them up either. I don't. But this was happening under Trump. Yeah, Biden's administration, maybe like when they came in, more undocumented migrants came over because Trump's iron fist rule is no longer a thing. You know, I I don't know. I See, I'm not an immigration expert. I just know that Ted Cruz is wrong. A thousand of them were unaccompanied minors, kids. And, and just today... Yeah, their parents probably sent them. Because they didn't want them to get, like, shot. Okay? What would you do, Ted, if that was your kids and you, you yourself couldn't get to America, but you, could, you knew you could send your kids and possibly, possibly they would be accepted by the American government and taken in and given a better life and not get, like, shot by some, some like, thugs or something? I don't know, thugs not politically correct either. I'm not using that to like describe any particular race. I'm using that to describe criminals and me- like Mexican cartels that like kill families and stuff. They're trying to escape that. It's dangerous. A lot of places are dangerous. We have it pretty good here in the U.S. We do. Yeah, our COVID situation is not good, but we have it really good here. And we should be able to um, allow other people to join in on that without calling them aliens. <laughs> uh, the Biden administration has over 16,000 children in custody. Ooh, we went geez. and toured the Biden cages. You know, for four years, 16, we heard Democrats 000? in the media talking about kids in cages under President Trump. Is Joe true? Biden has built. Is he is he lying or is that true? Let me see. Sixteen thousand kids in cages. U.S. adding sixteen thousand emergency beds for record high number. CBS News. Okay, yeah, migrant children in U.S. custody tops sixteen thousand amid surge at the border. Yeah, so like, of course, once Biden gets in office and Trump is gone. More people are like, okay, we can, it's safe for us to come now. And, and it turns out it's not. <laughs> it turns out it's not. But Ted, your side would be doing the same exact shit if somehow Trump was like, yeah, I'm just going to let them, yeah, I'm not going to be hard on the immigrants. We're not going to build a wall anymore. Like if he just canceled the wall, you think people wouldn't be coming over in droves? Like when, a new NBA Top Shot pack drops after like two weeks of there not being any. There's a whole wave of people that just swarm. And I, I never, not never, but I barely ever get a good spot in line. <laughs> and, you know, it's the, the being able to come to the U.S. is like a it is an opportunity, you know, and we should be able to give that to more people, in my opinion. I know a lot of people disagree with that, but hey, that's that's your problem, and whatever. (laughs) I'm just checking to see if there's another Top Shot pack dropping, but there's not. As of today, I don't see any. Okay, let me check my, uh, my email really quick. Yeah, NBA Top Shot has been pretty crazy. I'm getting off topic here. I know that. 
But, you know, this is important stuff. NFTs are huge right now. Okay, no, there's nothing. But yeah, 16,000 kids in cages, though. That's crazy. We, we, really, we really have to do something about that, like, fast. Because what he just showed in this video, this isn't doctored. It's, it's definitely not doctored. Ted Cruz does not have that ability. So what he's recording here, all these kids with... I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty mad at the Biden administration, too, after seeing this. Like, if I'm being real. Because you see all these kids with, like, what look like foil blankets. <laughs> They're, like, reflective blankets. I don't know how to describe these. They look so uncomfortable. They're, like, sleeping on the floor. It's a bunch of kids packed together during a pandemic. It's inhumane conditions. And you know what? It's not just the Biden administration. It's the whole United States government that's doing this. And it's fucked up. Democrat or Republican, there's evil people on both sides that don't care about minorities. That don't care about immigrants. That want to make it hard for people to become citizens. You know, that, that it's... The people in charge of the system are the reason that these kids are locked up with aluminum foil blankets. Like, what the fuck? More cages, the cages are bigger, and they're more full. The, the Donna facility, where that video you just showed... Damn. So, let me describe to you this scene, because you're, you're gonna want to know that this is happening. Yeah, it's like these foil blankets... And the only furniture that they have in this... It, it is a cage. It's a glass cage. I don't see a door. It's a glass cage. So, they have three park benches. Not like comfy benches or comfy chairs. Three public park benches <laughs> in this cage. And they're all laying down on the floor in their foil blankets. And this is what's going on at our border. And it's not right. I don't know who is to blame for that. Who built these facilities? Was it the Biden administration? Because that's fucked up, man. It's kind of fucked up. Why don't we just let these people in? And then figure out citizenship after. They're not taking jobs from anyone. They're not. They're not taking social security benefits. They don't have a social security number. I'm pretty sure you can't get one of those unless you're a citizen was taken. The Donna facility is this giant tent city that they've built. It's massive. It's designed to hold a thousand people, but under COVID restrictions, its capacity is 250. It right now has over 4,000 people in it. It is at a 1,500% capacity. Wow. And that meant you fuck? saw in, in these cages, children, little boys. Yeah, they're all packed together. Boys and little girls side by side. They're not six feet apart. And, and Biden tried to justify it by saying, like, oh, they're not all little kids. They're teenagers, too. And it's like, or they're mostly teenagers. And like, you think teenagers want to be locked up? That's the last thing a teenager wants. You know how shitty getting grounded is? Joe? <clears throat> so I'm kind of with Ted here. But he's only saying these, like, very liberal type things. <laughs> because it's... The Democrats that are doing this now, which is hypocritical of them. Sometimes you gotta ask yourself, what is it that I'm here to do? Going back to the future, changing the past, making sure your parents end up banging so you can be born. Why do we feel? When we can already see When the stars disappear Are they really gone? How long does a tab of acid last? This feels like way too long I thought it was gonna be more like weed But I'm seeing demons Demons are weird Or maybe they're not demons Maybe they're angels Tampax. Just buy it, okay?
Hey, what's up? It's Alex. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And listen, I don't know who to disagree with here. I was coming here to roast Ted Cruz and and it's turning out that he's saying things that I agree with. <laughs> and and he's but he's only saying them to to um, you know, to make the Democrats look wrong, which in this case they are, but both sides are doing this. So what are you what like they're they're both hypocrites. They're both hypocrites. Ted, you would be doing this exact same thing apart they're not three feet apart they're not even six inches apart you don't even care about covid you don't care you do not care your side does not care about covid you went to that fucking covid convention that you republicans held where the stage was shaped like a a swastika or whatever it was the ss sign It, it was so yeah so not subtle what you guys are represent and you're anti-covid so why are you like oh they're not six feet apart that's that's not that's that's messed up we should be following covid protocol even though i haven't been this entire time they're lying on the floor they're no beds they're lying on the floor side yeah those look like little children to me those don't look like teenagers by side they're covered with aluminum foil, emergency blankets. Yeah, and in that facility, the children there are testing. At least get them some real blankets. That pisses me off. These foil blankets. What, are, they on, are they in space? Are they living on the space station? I'm sure even on the space station, they have nice blankets. What is this? This is not humane at all. They're packed together. Positive for COVID. And they're they're all testing positive for COVID, Ted said. Which Ted all of a sudden cares about migrants and making sure they're safe. Which is like, what? Ted, like last week you didn't care about that. (laughs) Like literally last week you did not care about these migrants. Roughly a 10% rate. So they're locking them in these cages w- where COVID in a pandemic is a real risk. It is inhumane. It is unconscionable. And it's the direct result of the political decisions that Joe Biden has made. You know, President Trump had a health emergency plan in place. Anybody who entered illegally was told they're going back and they were sent back. But Biden carved out families and kids who are six years or under. And of course, that's what the smugglers and the cartels heard. So they're coming up with quote yeah. unquote families with six year olds or younger and, and they're selling those kids. How, I mean, they're renting those kids. How much money renting? are these cartels yeah. getting? They're renting those kids. Are you are you sure how common is that? Because I think a lot of kids just want to not kids. A lot of families send their kids over and I think they want to like twist this into something more sinister and you know these kids have been through enough you guys the government has put these kids through enough they've been through enough where they came from and you know we we should be more um empathetic to their situation and that's just me but you know i i just I don't understand why we can't do this differently. Whether it be Democrats or Republicans, I don't understand why we have to have such restricted borders. I understand you don't want dangerous people coming in, but people come here on vacation all the time. They could fuck shit up in a minute. You know, they get out of the airport and they could fuck shit up like in a second. But we we let them. We let them come here on vacation. 
I mean, I don't know about during COVID times, but we, we, we do in normal times. It's not much different. So, like, this restricted border policy that our, our government has set just automatically alienates people who are trying to come over here. Alienates people who've already been in enough, ha- had enough problems. By, by renting kids. Who's renting kids? Well, they get between four and six thousand dollars per person they bring across the border. We are seeing an instance of more and more young males arriving with kids. When those kids are DNA tested against those males, many of those males are not related to those kids. And what the cartels are doing is is they understand the what are the statistics on that? What I want to know, I want to know the stats on that, Ted. Give me, give me some percentages. Weakness and the loophole. Usually when politicians don't give an, like a percentage, it's because it's not, it's not that high. From my experience, it's them trying to twist something that's not actually that common. Holes in the Biden administration's policy. And, and a, if a young adult male, possibly a criminal, possibly a gang member, if they want to come into this country, all they have to have is a kid. And so we're seeing the cartel members renting kids, renting babies, renting little children. Of course, many of those kids then are physically abused or sexually abused. And they're seeing those kids then coming multiple times with multiple different adults. It, it, it is tragic. And, you know, Maria, it's one of the things that's frustrating because many Democrats like to pretend their open border policies are somehow humane. There is nothing humane about what Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are doing at the border. They're subjecting kids to horrific abuse. They're endangering their lives in a pandemic by keeping them locked up in cages right on top of each other. So what should we do then? Because I don't think that's right either. But then what do we do? Do we send them back? I don't I don't agree with that. I think we just let them in. I think we should just let them in. But, of course, Ted doesn't want to just let them in. And I think that's what's fucked up. You know, Biden actually wants to, like, change the system from, from the inside. He wants to make it easier for people to come here legally. And that, that's good. That's a good thing. I, the way he's approaching, um, dealing with undocumented migrants, in this current moment, not good. Do I think it's going to get better? Yes, I think so. You know, I really can't roast Ted when it comes to this. This this isn't going to be funny. There's nowhere where I can be like, oh, I have no testicles. Like, I I can't. I don't. I don't think I can do that today. Um, just because there there's nothing really to um to roast. In my opinion, other than like he's a hypocrite, you know, there's there's that I'm just seeing on my YouTube, um, my YouTube suggested the Lil Nas X video. So what's going on with that? This is where I wish I had like a co-host or someone where I could just be like, so what's going on with the Lil Nas X video? Um, because from what I've heard, he um he gives the devil a lap dance or something and now he's releasing a shoe that has a drop of human blood in it and i don't know if that's true or not but that's what everyone is reporting and i i uh, i don't understand what message is trying to be sent out here i'm not a super catholic person so i'm not like offended or anything i just don't get it like, is it trolling? Most likely it's just trolling. It's like all these Catholics are so fucking have these sticks up their be- up their asses and they're so uptight. So let me make this video that's just gonna s- scare the shit out of all the Catholics more than WAP. And so you know what? Good on him. He he makes some cool artistic choices. He he's a very creative dude, and good on him. Good on him. I'll probably watch the video later today, 
maybe after I record this episode. But what we're gonna go into now, let me see what I, what do I have on the agenda here? Um, where, where is my agenda? Okay. So yeah, we, we did the Ted Cruz. But now, 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 what we're gonna do, is we're gonna look at keeping up with the Karens. Because that, that's what we need to do. And, and yeah, you know, that's, that's okay. Because these, these people need to be, uh, need to be roasted a little bit. They're, they're a li- little bit mad. They're a little bit mad. Where, uh, where's the most recent one? Here we go. Here we go. So this is where your fat ass work, huh? Are you fucking serious? Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> Listen, you fat, funky ass bitch. So- when I see you off and out of Excuse work, me. I'm gonna beat your fucking ass. Talking all that shit. And hey, this is where you work at? This is where you work at? I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. And that's all my daughter. You wanna talk all that shit about black people? You talk mad shit about how black people's ugly, that be hitting. This bitch is racist as hell. I got mad, mad information about her talking big shit on black people. And I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. You think that racist shit is cute? Oh shit, so she was saying some shit on the internet, I guess. And this, this lady, like, tracked her down at her job. And outed her. As, like, as a racist. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. I'm going to beat the shit shit out of you, bitch. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. You fuck with the wrong bitch. Talking that crazy shit online. I will beat the fuck out of you. Beat the fuck out of you. Okay. okay. All right, bitch, because I come reach behind me and fuck you up. Yeah, you gave me my food already because I snatched your fucking short ass from behind that counter, bitch. That's why you keep talking back there. No, I don't start no trouble with you. You fucking ignorant. And I see how you beat to these fucking kids. You better be lucky, man. You won't be like that to mine because I fuck you right up. I don't know if they trouble or not, but I know that little girl said you gave her money, bitch. Dumbass. You need to go get your mom so she can come around here and drag her little fucking ass out that fucking window. I wish I could grab you right through this window so your camera, so your camera can see me fuck you up. Yeah, I want your ki- I want your camera to see me whoop your ass, bitch. Cause you got a lot of mouth behind this fucking glass. You got you got a whole lot of mouth behind this glass. I wish I knew the context to this. I really do, but um, man, it's like a it's a restaurant. I believe it's a Chinese restaurant. It looks like a New York Chinese restaurant. We have. We have a lot of um a lot of those near us and they're they're all delicious. I might oh I want I wanna oh I might make some some general sows in the air fryer today. That might be good. Damn, I'm hungry. I see you keep looking getting smart with these kids. Somebody gonna fuck you up, right? Somebody gonna fuck you up, bitch. I know what time you leave here. Somebody gonna come around here and fuck you right up. You probably shouldn't threaten people at their jobs, just like, you know, just, just a word of advice. You know, I, I think that's <clears throat> something we need to think about as a, pe- as like all people of this earth. Don't threaten people at their jobs because it doesn't make you look good. Probably shouldn't do that. And that is what I have to say about that. And we say bye-bye. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. I feel like Donald Trump would threaten someone at their at their job. Come on, put me out. Come on, put me out. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna come around 
don't even put me out, is you? I told you, <laughs> you ain't busy, okay. bitch. You standing there running your yeah, fucking okay, mouth. Yeah. You okay. standing there running your fucking mouth. That's what you doing. Jeez. Bitch, yeah, I got my food so you can't do shit to it. Trifling ass bitch. Bitch, she ass fucking whore. What you better fuck? talk your fucking language, you bitch. You yeah, I want you to come behind yeah. me. I want you to come from the, I want you to come behind me. I know. I know you scared, bitch, because watch when you come the fuck outside. Watch when you come. You come out that fucking door at 11 o'clock. Watch what happens to you. Right. Watch what Cause you keep playing with these people, no, kids. You. you keep you coming to talk. Yeah, but bitch, you love our money, don't you? You love our money, don't you? Right. Uh huh. Yeah. You, you trouble. You little okay, fucking ugly okay. bitch. What's your opinion? Mm. Just leave. What's your opinion? I don't care about what your opinion. You need to leave. Say it again. You need to leave. Okay, say you it again. You can me whatever. I don't want you anything. I didn't call you anything. You know? You well, what call did you call me? Scared of you recording me? Scared? What did, what, did, what did he call him? Don't tell me he called him the, the N-word. I don't want you scared. coming in here. Scared? What did I say what, for what, scared? What, because I'm black. Follow me, Lewis and Maggie. What's the name? I don't want your business. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Lewis and Maggie. Yeah. Okay. What? You can't turn somebody down because of the color of their skin. This isn't 1950. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? You can't do that. If you're you're the owner of this store, this doesn't look good for you, dude. You're going to lose a lot of business. Okay. Yeah, you want man, me to be more clear than that? Bro, you don't know who I am. I'll get you shut down, boy. Yeah, I'm 12 cents no, short. You want me, me to go to the ATM to get a $3 charge to get 12 cents? Just, shut your ass up, boy. Just, just Respect leave. me because I'm leave. from here. You're just not leave. from here, all right? I'm here. No, you're not because okay. I said so. And that's not racism. I don't care what you say. The people that's from me. America don't act like you. Uh, you're well, a fucking that's... pussy. Call the cop. Well, that's also like, I don't know who's in the wrong here. See, with all of these that I, that, I'm seeing, like, I don't know who's in the wrong. It's not clear because both sides are doing fucked up shit. These are tough times for people, I guess. Fuck you. They all fucking know me. Call the cops. Yeah, just stay there then. Okay, come here. okay, okay. They all fucking they, know they me. They here. all just know me. There. Follow me at Louis and Mackie. Hey, my boy right here got me for 12 cents that yeah. this guy was crying about. Hey, yeah, I hope I ruin your day. I let you go without the car. La, la, Guess I'm what? You stay here all day. I, I, make, I make more money than you. I make more money than you. Yet, you don't have enough money to buy yourself. Yeah, yeah, you didn't have the 12 cents, dude. Like if I like he if you didn't have the money, so I, who I don't know. Like did, if he called him a racist word, the dude that if he called the dude who didn't have the twelve cents a racist word, then that's messed up. But the dude who didn't have the twelve cents a didn't have the twelve cents, and b is being like pretty um, was it xenophobic or something? Because this dude's not from here or something. Look at that, I got him. I got him to insult me. Yeah. Guess what? Lawsuit. 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 You want me to insult you some more? Say something. Say something. Fucking asshole. Get the fuck out. Any more? Because you got gray hair. I know you got more. I don't give a shit. And you're fat. Your wife probably doesn't fuck with you. Look. Jesus. Okay, that's like. This is kind of fucked up. Hey, tag me, tag me, tag me on the show, bro. What's your Instagram? Uh, tag me? Oh, these guys are stupid. These dudes are fucking fools. Uh, Lucy Mac. Yeah, I got Lucy Mac. Mac. Come here every time. I told him not to come. He still comes here all the time. Okay. I come here all I the time. I need somebody here. He's... I, I told him I don't want his fucking business. Okay? He's great. <laughs> hey, what happened? What happened? This nigga started chewing over 12 cents and I was finna give it to you, bro. Okay, okay. <laughs> Oh, so he had the 12 cents? Okay, so that he was going to... Okay, so then what? That's weird, then. That seems fucked up. So he was short on cash. He was short on 12 cents. His friend was going to give him the 12 cents, and this dude started flipping out at them and saying he doesn't want their business? See, I don't know. Like, they, they didn't... Rec they, well, yeah, they didn't start recording when it 
when whatever happened happened. Fuck, stay there. Hey, Fuck sir, employee, stay there. you make sure you let the cops know this yeah, is about I will, I will let the cops 12 seconds. Right Can you stop screaming? Asshole. Can you stop screaming? I, I'm Can you stop screaming? My fucking store. I Can you stop screaming? No, this is America's store. I don't give a fuck you bought it me. from America. Fuck you. Okay? This is over 12 cents. And now you're going to have a heart attack. I give you the 12 cents off. I don't want Exactly the, the point. So what's wrong? So what's wrong? So what's wrong? Every time you fucking come in, you show no, up. No, 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 fuck no. Fuck you. No, 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 no. Tag me on Instagram, he says. Dude, you're you're getting in an argument with a with a store clerk. <laughs> Who you call an asshole? <laughs> I'm speaking Spanish. Yeah, he said asshole in Spanish. <laughs> Who you call an asshole though? I want to know that. <laughs> you don't want to wake up nothing now. I'm just calm. I'm on this young lady's side, but don't wake up nothing. Start nothing. Look at this one over here. You don't want to wake up nothing. Look at this one over here. You ain't talking about nothing on Spanish, you young. I'm speaking Spanish if I want. No fuck. Huh? I'll speak Spanish if I want. It's yeah. my right. <laughs> oh, I know you can, but I'm just saying, no call nobody, no asshole out the way. That's oh, all. Oh, that's all. Okay. Whatever the fuck you said, then. I don't give a damn what you said. What are you doing? What are you doing? What? <laughs> what happened? Say what? Oh, 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 I know that one. Mommy, you going to play? Oh, no, it ain't going on. He said he was going to be. The whole fee. The whole fee. Y'all hosted $70, you know? I don't know what you're trying to I gave you the whole fee. No. You told me the price, and I paid you the price that you told me. You said forty eight dollars. Yes, I told you. And I, I told you, you that. You want? I ask you one pedicure. You say no. You want? I, I I didn't ask for no pedicure. I didn't get no pedicure. Yeah, and you. That's what I'm saying. Honor. I didn't want no pedicure. I didn't get no pedicure. You said no pedicure. I said I just want my feet like that, and that's what I told you, and that's what I paid for. Jeez. I don't see shit funny because I don't pay too much damn money. Can you just do her toes so we can go? And she can get my money back. So, because I'm saying she, she's, a, okay, okay. she's a dissatisfied customer. Just do her toes and she won't come back. Okay, but okay. right now, you know, we don't want to call her, right? I can for you seven back for the caller because I took her just seven for the caller. She don't want, I can seven. You charge me seven, you saying you charge me seven dollars to just polish eight toes, I can go get some damn dollar polish and polish eight toes by my damn self. You saying you charge right me now, seven right dollars for that? You have to quit it. Yeah, and, and that's paid for. That's yeah, paid for. Fifteen dollars, right? Exactly. I don't know what you charge. I know you told me forty-eight dollars for my feet and my nails, and that's what I gave you. No, your nail already. You just paid the toe trendy. Trendy because right now it ain't you no hard way. You, got, you saying my eight. nails are ready and I just paid the toe. You, you you got one ticket. I gave you a fifty dollar bill. You charged me forty eight and then you gave me two dollar back. It ain't no this. This is separate. You gave me one ticket and you I paid you what you told me. Jeez. Okay, so what do you want her to do, Tasha? I told you already. Tasha. Okay. Tell her what you want her to do. So you saying you're not going to give my money back or do nothing to my nails? I get for you seven bags. I'm not trying to hear you. You saying you're not going to give my money back or do nothing to my nails? I'm going to break up some shit in her and take no, out not. some shit. You're going to have to call me. Oh, no. Is this a Panera? This looks like Panera. I'm 
be really kept the man in a certain type of way. Like, I've been here for a while, I've been here for two hours. The people that get there, Jeez, those always get me. They always get me. Um, so I, I don't know if there is uh ever going to be a relationship advice again, but we'll see. After the whole. Wait, so the moderators have said this community private. Only approved members can view and take part in the discussions. Um, alright, I'm gonna message them. How does one get in to the sub? I'm not press or a doxer. I just want to help people with their problems and seek out help for myself. Let me know what I, what steps I need to take to be admitted into the sub, if any. Thanks. Send. Okay, so I sent the mods a message, so hopefully next time we'll be able to, um, next time we'll be able to do a relationship advice, and if, uh, if not, then listeners, this is your time to send me your relationship issues, and I will try to answer your problems. We could be like Bill Burr and how he does that, but. Less like, less of an accent. So we have a few choices here. Um, we can look at just no mother-in-law. We can look at am I the asshole. Yeah, let's do an am I the asshole. Let's see if this person is the asshole. Can we get into that? We are. We're in. Okay. Am I the asshole for ratting on a girl for plagiarizing a piece of artwork in class? I've been doing art in multiple forms since I was really young. I've never been interested in art as a career or job. It's something I started doing to express myself and help my anxiety. I've been posting my drawings on Instagram just for fun, and through this I became friends with a somewhat popular artist. We will call her Dana. By popular, I don't mean millions of followers. I mean she has a little over 25k. Okay, that's pretty good. Not an extreme amount, but still a good following. We became rather close through Instagram. Now, Dana is an amazing artist. The girl can make a drawing look like a photo. Now back to the main point. It all happened in art class. We previously had an assignment to do an art piece that, that showed how the world has changed due to the virus. When first giving the assignment, our art teacher, we will call her Mrs. G, told us that she would pick five pieces of work to enter into an art contest being held by the local art center. Anyone interested in being picked should tell her after class. The prize was a $100 gift card to the local Michaels store, which is the best art store around here. Yeah, Michaels is good. Now, I'm perfectly content with my cheap dollar store art supplies. As I said, I don't take my art seriously. It's just for fun. So I didn't enter. Now comes Wednesday, Mr. G, uh, Mr. G had picked the drawings and they were posted outside the art room. Now, when I looked at one of the winner's drawings, completely stuck out to me. It was an art piece submitted by a girl we will call Candy. I knew I had seen that exact piece before on Dana's page. She had done it about a month back, even got up the one post on, even got up the one post on Dana's page. And held them side. Oh, I even held them side by side. Completely copied. Now here's where I might be the asshole. I ratted her out to Mrs. G. Who's so? Is there okay? Mrs. G. Going as far as is Mrs. G. Gender fluid? Because you said Mister. You said Mrs. <laughs> is that a typo? <laughs> Going as far as to show her Dana's Instagram page, name, na namely the piece Candy copied. 
Now, Mrs. G has a rule, no tracing or copying art. Original piece only, unless the assignment mentioned otherwise. So Mrs. G was not happy. She confronted Candy, who tried denying it at first, but admitted that she copied it once once there was proof. She also went back to look at Candy's previous work and she seen and saw she copied most of those as well. Candy was sent to the office and didn't come back for the rest of the day. From what I heard, her punishment was having her piece taken down and being disqualified from the competition, obviously. She was given a failing grade on the assignment and was given three days out of school suspension. Wow. Now her friends are her and her friends are harassing me for turning her in, calling me a rat, saying I should have, shouldn't have butted my nose in where it doesn't belong, saying it's not my business. But isn't it my business? Dana is my friend, and Candy was going to enter Dana's hard work into a competition claiming it as hers. If she won the piece, like it would hang in the art center with her name on it. And that just didn't sit well for me. with me. Am I the asshole for ratting on a girl for plagiarizing a piece of artwork in class? No! No, you're not. Competition. She cheated in a competition. That's... And when, when specifically the rules say you can't trace, she can call you a rat all she wants, but that doesn't... That doesn't take away from the fact that she's the one that did something wrong that, that deserved to be ratted on. So you didn't do anything wrong. You're not the asshole. You just wanted the art competition to be fair, and you wanted your friend to get the proper credit that they deserve for their work of art. That's understandable. That is completely okay. You're not the asshole. They, they are. Candy is a fucking cunt. <laughs> Alright? Fuck that bitch. Wow. That, that sounds like some high school drama. Some serious high school drama. And I, I hope that they stop being bitches. And let me see. I'll give you an award. Let's see what award I get to give. The silver award. Giveaway in 23 hours and 59. Okay. I'll give you a silver. Here you go. Uh, send. And there you go. To keep awarding, get some coins. Yeah, no, I don't want. I don't want to get coins. There's nothing in it for me other than giving people awards. Like I'd, I'll take the free one. But what are people saying? Not the asshole. Candy's pissed. She got caught. Yeah, like you stole somebody's art. That's fucked up. She's the asshole. So yeah, Candy sucks. You did the right thing, and that's that. So don't worry. Do not worry about a thing. So anyways, we're going to close it out here. I appreciate you guys coming. I really do. I appreciate everyone who listens. I love you all very much. I do. And, you know, I hope big things are to come in the near future. I, um, I don't know, I don't know what to say here. <clears throat> Other than, um, yeah, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you guys. I love you, and I will see you in a couple of days. Give me that pussy! This has been The Short News. I'm Alex Mador. You can follow me at Alex underscore M-A-D-O-R-E on Twitter and Alex Mador on Instagram. I will see you there. I love you. Peace. And we say bye-bye.